What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing? It's Jonathan. You guys hear me okay? Can you see my screen okay? Val, Dave, cool. Thank you. Nancy, hey, Curtis. Chris, Jeff, awesome, guys. Thank you. Welcome. So what we're going to do today, guys, is just options 101. Just really slow it down. Um, I'm going to leave the questions up throughout. Happy to answer any questions. For some of you, this might be a little bit slow. For others, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. My overall objective really for this is to cater to those who signed up for the annual, who committed to being with me for a long, for the long term, but felt a little intimidated by the content. So that's why I added these two classes today's. And then next week, next week, we'll do some options training, but I really want to make that just based around the, the week ahead and how to use that week ahead and different exercises that you can use to paper trade, when you should start trading for real, when you should start increasing your risk uh, and all that kind of stuff, just more like money management. Let me quickly read a risk disclaimer and then we'll uh, get the fun stuff started. Trading or investing carries a high level of risk may not be suitable for all persons. Before deciding to trade or invest, carefully consider investment objectives, level of experience, ability to tolerate risk. So these are educational presentations, guys. Whenever we talk about specific trades, just where I see value in the market, please don't take it as a trade recommendation to any one person. Okie doke. Where to start? Where to start? Does anybody have any specific questions about their portfolio? I always like to start it off. Does anybody have any risk that they have any questions about right now? Just in case you're out there and you're worried about your position, I'd rather you not be worried about your position and be able to sp focus on the training. So always want to kind of start with that. Nancy, you're good? You guys are good? Good. Okay. With that being said, let's open an options chain. Let's talk options. How about Microsoft? Let's not do Microsoft. I always like finding a, like a $30 stock. So ideally I'd like to find a $30. Ooh. Let's go into the cannabis world, CGC. Hey, Greg, uh, I saw the email that you sent and it'll be easier if I answer it live anyway. So anybody's questions, guys, I'm always gonna share them with the group, I'll read them aloud. And Jeff's question is regarding on the spreadsheet, closing only, what does closing only mean? So sorry for the talking in the background. It's just my inconsiderate wife who knows that I'm live. I'm just kidding. She's not inconsiderate, but still a little bit. Um, close. I'm just pulling up the week ahead. So closing only. This is a, it's a trading term. What is that noise? So what closing only means, guys, is if you have the position, cool, keep ma keep managing the position. If you don't have the position, closing only we have right here. If you don't have the position, this is not a position to get into. And I label that by numbering the trades on the left. And so QRTEA is closing only, so let's not initiate new positions. If you have the position, hold, relax. We're just short of credit spread there, Greg. We're holding until expiration, okay? I rarely trade options with stops because of execution risk. So that's what closing only means. Does that make sense? 
Can you put a Y in the check box if that make in the chat box if that makes sense? I'll be asking you to do that throughout the presentation, guys, especially once I start teaching lessons. That just helps me to know that you guys are listening and that you get it. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And so on the spreadsheet, and I'll talk about this next week. I'll talk about that next week. No reason to jump there. But let's talk about options. Setting on my screen here. Okay, got my trusty pen out. So CGC. CGC is our cannabis trade that we like, right? Okay. So CGC, let's say it's trading at 31.72. So now it's, uh, Chris, a good one is to help me out is what is options worth? Chris, uh, can you ask that question again? Or maybe you know, it's like a spelling bee. Can you rephrase that question? And while you're rephrasing, CGC. So CGC, let's call it 3172. It's going to move around, but I'm not going to move around with it. So we have our strikes and let's use 25, 27 half, 30, 32, and 35. Okay, and now we're going to do calls. Come on, Penn, don't fail me. And then puts. Okay. So overall, when you're talking about stock options, stock options are stock. That's all they are. Options are a derivative of stock. So these different strikes, let's just talk about the call side for right now, because the puts are the same except covering the downside. The calls are covering the upside. So options just allow us, if we're buying, to buy stock at a specific price. Right now, if the stock's at 31.72, the 35 calls in January are priced at, let's say they're $1.90. The stock is right here. 31.72. So the 35 is just, do you want to get long stock at 35? Why would you want to get long stock at 35 when it's trading at 31.72? Because you get a massive leverage to do that. So if anybody wanted to get long, 100 shares of stock, at 35, it would cost $190. Okay. Long 100 shares equals 
190 bucks. That's all that is. The person who sells it is just placing a bet that the stock's not going to get that high, that the stock's going to stay under 35. So if you break it down like that and just look at the options like their stock, it really simplifies things. If we expired right now at 31.72, those 35 calls, does anybody want to be long stock from 35 if the stock's trading at 31.70? No, right? No, of course not. No thanks. So you're just gonna say, you know what? I don't wanna be long stock from 35. You can keep my $190. Okay, if you did want to be long stock at 35, you would lose, you know, uh, $3.28, but you wouldn't. And your broker knows that. So if the stock's at 31.72 and you're long the 35 strike calls, the broker knows that, the exchange knows that, so they're not going to exercise. Okay, those won't be exercised. They're out of the money because common sense is going to tell them that there's no reason to be long stock. The person who's short stock gets to keep that $190. The person who's short those 35s. Okay. As you get more in the money, it gets more expensive. And it gets more expensive because there's a higher likelihood of that stock getting in the money. 30s are $4. 30s are $4. This is all premium. It's all fluff. It's not real. Over 38 days, this will go to zero if the stock doesn't move because it's not real. There's no stock. That 290 is just what you're paying to hold the stock for 38 days, hoping that that thing gets in the money, hopefully that it becomes stock. Are you guys all good with this? It's always difficult, and, and I say this to my coaching clients all the time, if I'm presenting to you live, I can look out and see you shaking your head or I could see you really confused. When I do this online, I can't tell. So that's why once in a while I'm going to ask you like right now, if you could put a Y in the checkbox, that you're following along. That would be cool. Good, good, good. Sorry, that's that's all options are, guys. That's it. The 40s, I mean, the, the the 30 strike are worth four bucks. Out of that $4, if I write over here, out of that $4, which I'm referencing this thing, $4, $4, $1.72 is stock. And the difference is going to be 228, and that's premium or fluff or nonsense. You know, it's just nothing. It's nothing. You're just paying for that extra 228. Does this make sense right here? Because $4 with the stock at 31.72, all I did was do 31.72 minus 30. Jan, you wanna check your math on that? Okay, good question guys. So stocks at 31.72 minus the strike $30 equals $1.72. You 
You see that? I'm right up here now. 31.72 minus the strike 30 is a dollar 72. The the uh, calls are trading for four. A dollar 72 of that is going to be stock. 228 is just going to be premium. And now to show you something really cool. Look at the value of the puts. What do you notice about the value of the puts on that strike? Anybody want to take that one? What do you notice about the value of the puts on that 30 strike? Okay, we're not there yet. The value of the puts is just the premium. That 228 is the value of the puts. I'll do that example again. I'm going to clean this all up. I'm going to clean this all up. It's got to be an easier way, right? There we go. clean this all up because that's a really, really cool example to be able to see the difference between calls and puts. And this is really the most efficient way, inefficient way to erase. Here. New slide. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, so Daniel's asking, does it matter if you use the bid or the ask? So please understand in this example, we're just learning options. We're not really, I mean, CGC is moving as we do this. So I'm not talking about the bid or the ask right now. I'm talking about the value of the options. What many people don't realize is just because the bid and ask are a certain value doesn't mean it's right. Right? It's just market makers. Some of them are smart. Some of them aren't smart. I mean, that's what we're really looking to do is. So what I'm really looking to do is find things that are priced inefficiently. What I'm trying to do by this lesson is to make sure that you understand what you're doing when you make a trade. I don't think that any of you should ever trade in the money options. I don't think there's any reason for you to trade in the money options unless you're doing it because of margin and you and you want it as a way to buy cheap stock. But other than that, if your account's over 10 grand, I don't think you should ever buy or sell an in the money option. Let me just answer some questions here. Uh, Val is saying, is that skew? No. Uh, Dave is saying, can I freeze the option quotes so it doesn't change? Yes, I like that idea. 
One sec, let's do that. David, good suggestion, buddy. So to freeze the option quote, what I'm gonna do is just go to on demand. I believe that's what you're talking about, Dave, right? Oh, it doesn't freeze it. Dave, how do I freeze it? If I put it on on-demand, though, it's just, it just runs live from that spot. It, uh, sorry. Jonathan's not thinking with his head. I know how to freeze it. I'll just take a picture of it. There we go. That'll be easier for everybody. Good call, Dave. I like that. Okay, let's do it this way. How's that? And CGC, let's say it's a 41. Okay, CGC is at 41. So let's do our strikes again. Let's do the 30s, 35s, 40, Okay, so now these are going to be our strikes. Okay, our stock is 41. We'll be right here. So 45s, let's round up to use easier numbers. Thirty-five, ten, thirties are going to be. Let's call them thirteen fifty. Okay. So now we can look at the extrinsic, which is going to be premium. Okay, premium fluff. It's not real. It's not real. So right now, if there's 
in this example, 70 days until expiration. All of this that's out of the money out of the money out of the money in 70 days if the stock doesn't move all of this is worth zero everything out of the money is worth zero it's going to zero it's not real it's fluff it's premium okay this extrinsic is six this extrinsic is four this extrinsic is 250. this is all extrinsic 350, 230. Okay, and all I did was take the 41 CGC price in this example, minus 30 is 11, 1350 minus 11 is 250. Okay, this is going to turn out to be a tough example, by the way, and I'll tell you why, but we're still going to use, use the example like CGC as any stock, and I'll explain that a little bit more, but there's something very specific to CGC that's going to throw off the options pricing a little bit. Not a big deal, but is everyone, we're good where we are right now, we're following along? Val, no. Talk to me, Val. What's going on? Stocks at 41. Do you want to buy stock at 45? If you do, there's $5 of premium that you have to pay. After 70 days, that $5 is going to zero. See, yes, yes. So Val is confused because we we switched the price of CGC. CGC is trading at 3177 right now. We are using a phony baloney example of CGC going back to a different time frame. Okay, I just took a screenshot of it. So it, this is not this is not today's CGC price. So let's use the example what's going on, you know, just in front of you. We're just looking at the options. For anybody who doesn't know, I'm extremely bullish CGC. I'm happy to go over that trade later. I love being long CGC. Okay, but Val, does that clear things up? Is that your only question right there? Yes, cool, okay. So, the reason why I don't want you doing in the monies, why I don't think that you should be doing in the monies, is because the like the intrinsic, it's just stock. So the thirties, it's eleven dollars of stock. Eleven plus two fifty is thirteen fifty. Six dollars of stock. I mean, that's not six. Yeah, six dollars of stock, four dollars of extrinsic equals the value of the options. Option value. Chris is asking the question, do in the money move less than out of the money calls if the stock moves? Well, 
So let's. So Chris's question is a great question, and I want to answer this kind of by walking it through and really, you know, common sense. So do in the monies move less than out of the money? So whenever I have a question like that, I think of the outskirts. I think of like, Chris, think of the $10 strike against the $100 strike. Dave, you're correct, right? So is the $10 strike going to move more than the $100 strike? Which is closer to stock? If you do the 55 strike, it's not really stock. It's really, really far from being in the money. It's really far from being stock. So if CGC goes up to 43, does that really increase the probability of going to 55? Not really, right? But if you own the 10 strike calls, all you do is you own stock. It's your delta. You can look at the delta to determine how much the option will change with a given dot with a dollar move in the underlying stock. So if I go back to the options change, the delta, the 15 strikes are going to move a dollar every time the stock moves a dollar because it's just stock. The 80s or the 75s aren't going to move at all because it's so far from stock that these 75s or 80s, it doesn't care if CGC moves $1. Okay, Chris, does that make sense? So whenever you have a question like that about options, think of the extremes. Uh, Frank is saying the top right should be in the money next to 30, 35, 40. Next, next to th the top right should be in the money next to 30. These are puts, Frank. These are puts. That's why I wrote out of the money there. Frank, does that make sense? So now if we look at the puts, what do we know about these puts? Is there any intrinsic? Any stock? That's part of these. None. They're all out of the money, right? They're all out of the money. There's no intrinsic value. Because you're only short from 40 if that stock goes under 40. Because right now, if it's trading 41 and the exchange says, hey, do you want to be short 100 from 40? You'd say no. What do you think? I'm a bozo, you'd say? And they would say, no, you're not a bozo. Of course not. So there's no intrinsic down there. It's only extrinsic. It's only that fluff. We already know how much extrinsic there is on those strikes because we already did that example. So what you can do is... We know the extrinsic. That's your puts. So for me, calls or puts, puts or calls, they're the same thing. There's no difference. For you, one gets you long, one gets you short. But if you see from this example, premium is premium. Once you figure out the premium on the 35 strike, it's the same for the calls and the same for the puts. One of them just has intrinsic and the other one does not. Sorry, that's mercury. That's mercury again. Thanks, Kier. Okay, that makes sense?
This one you may have to watch back to get that. But that shows the relationship between puts and calls. Does anybody have any questions about this before I take it off screen? Does anybody feel more confused than when they walked in? Because that wouldn't be good. Good. Good, 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 good. Um, ooh. No, Julie, I got you. It's, it's a good one to, to move on. Chris, you're, what you're talking about is something called reversals and conversions. There's no reason for me to go into that explanation because it's not practical for you to use. So you're right, but I don't want to go into it because I don't want to teach you something that you guys can't do. Okay? The reason somebody would use those kind of trades is if they wanted to trade negative interest rate like hard to locate stocks and trade the negative interest rates, which is a very, very sophisticated trade. And so that would just make this lesson more confusing than it needs to be because you're not going to be able to do that. Okay. So let's get rid of all this. And let's, let's go back to the live market. I didn't like this whole, I like the idea in principle, but I didn't love it. I didn't like that it confused some of you. So let's talk about a stock. Should we talk about CGC again? Because we were playing around with it. Carrie making noise with her phone. I didn't do that. Julie had some questions about vertical spreads. And I think it's really important to understand vertical spreads. So I think we should go to vertical spread land. So a vertical spread, a vertical spread is going to be if we have the 35s if we have the 37 halves the 40s 42 halves 45s strikes now understand if you learn calls the puts are just opposite so i'm trying not to go back and forth between the two because i think that adds more confusion. What I really need to do, and just from, you know, I've taught this to so many different people, and just over time, I think what works the best is to really understand the call side. And then once you do, and once you can like instinctively understand it, then move over to the put side. Because the puts, it's the same exact thing, it's just the downside rather than the upside. So stock is at 31.62. It's going to move. It doesn't matter that it moves. When you do a vertical spread, now a vertical spread is going to be a debit spread or a credit spread. Okay? A debit for calls by lower sell higher a credit is going to be sell high 
buy low. Thirty fives, forties. Thirty fives are going to trade for a dollar eighty. I'm going to estimate for easier math. And the forties are going to trade for eighty cents. Okay. If we do the debit spread, we are buying the one eighties and selling the 40s. 35, 40, debit spread, vertical, same thing. Debit spread, vertical, call, bull spread, they're all the same thing. Don't get too caught up in all these dumb terms. If you buy this, you're buying the 35s for $1.80 and you're selling the 40s for 80 cents. That 80 cents is a credit. So the spread is costing you $1. If you do that spread 10 times, you have $1,000 of risk. Okay, so we bought the 80s, it cost $1. 10 times equals $1,000. Let me get a Y in the chat in the uh, chat if that makes sense. A no if it doesn't. It's cool if it's a no, no problem. We'll go over it again. Ask whatever questions you have. All good. Look at you guys with the Ys. I love it. I love it. Uh, Jeff, I don't understand that. Max P four per share. What is that? What does that mean? Oh, you're correct, Jeff. Well done, well done, well done. Jeff moved on, so this cost us a dollar to do. Now, my next question is gonna be, what's the most that we can lose? What's our max risk? It's just like buying a call, right? What's our max risk that we can lose on this trade? If CGC goes to zero, what are we gonna lose on this trade? A dollar, that's it. So max risk equals a dollar or a thousand. You know, if we talk cash. Okay, your max risk is just what you invested. The reason why this kind of trading makes sense for you, for me, is because you know exactly what you're risking. So if we do this trade 10 times and it's $1,000 of risk, before you get into that trade, you have to make the decision. Are you comfortable risking $1,000? No, if I lose $1,000, no dinner for, for a week. Then don't do the trade. There's no such thing as doing a spread or doing an options trade for $1,000 and only losing 500. Don't do the trade, not for you. You might want to risk $100. You could do a one lot, $300, do a three lot. Find out your comfort zone. Find out where you could look at the trade, make an objective, uh, maybe make a, 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 a good decision, and then stay in the trade until you're able to take off a big profit or until it expires. You make the decision beforehand. Val is saying, so when do you make the $1,000 and how do you execute the trade? Excellent question. You could execute the trade by buying one and selling the other to a limit order on both sides. You could also execute the trade by doing one ticket and doing a vertical spread ticket, buy 35, sell 40s, a dollar bid. You could do it as one transaction. You make max profit when the stock is above 40, because all you are in this position 
is you're long a thousand shares from 35 and you're short. So your real position is your long 1,000 shares from 35 and your short 1,000 shares from 40. So now you can see if the stock goes to 100, how much do you make? If the stock goes to 100, how much do you make? If the stock goes to 100, guys, you're long 1,000 shares from 35 and you're short 1,000 shares from 40. You make 5,000 minus the 1,000 that you risked. That's all you are. You're long 1,000, short 1,000. Okay? So Vince, now you make four bucks. 40 minus 35 is five, minus the $1 that you paid. You make $4,000. If the stock goes to zero, you lose 1,000. If the stock goes to 36, you break even. Yeah, I'm sorry, no you don't. What'd you say? Carrie, <laughs> Carrie okay, called me a liar. Um, if the stock goes to 36, these would be worth a dollar. So you lose 80 cents, you'd break even. You'd break even. Okay. Julie, that's okay. My brain hurts when I learn to. Just watch it again. This kind of stuff, watch if there's any part that you didn't understand or that it's not instinctive, just watch it again and then go through these exercises, okay? CGC, you could just go through those and do them yourself. So Chris is now saying, what's the difference between the credit spread and the debit spread? Well, the same exact, if we just do the opposite, we're selling 180s and buying 80 cents, you get a dollar of credit. Okay, so you collect 10 times, you collect a thousand bucks. Your risk is 4,000. So your profit's a thousand if, if it stays under 35, but if you're wrong, you're risking four grand. I don't like to bet a dollar to, to I don't like to bet $5 to win a dollar. <laughs> No thanks. No interest. I always want to bet a dollar to make five. Okay, for my sports gamblers out there, it's like betting on something when it's negative 500, when somebody's favored to win five to one or one to five. It's The risk isn't worth the reward. Okay. What happens to the option you sold if it expires worthless? No, 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 you don't owe Julie. You get the credit right away. When you sell an option, you get a credit. If it expires worthless, you keep it. You own that, that's yours. Dave, no stop losses in options. Never use a stop loss in options. Never, 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 never. Look at the 40 strike on the CGC. If you buy 10, it's $850. If you use a stop to get out, it's $750. You just lost 15% on execution cost. That's not a sustainable business. Trade less. My number one advice I can give to anybody that I've worked with over my 20 years is everybody should trade less and to hold things for longer. Make better decisions, spend a little bit more time making decisions. And that's why for the coaching students on here, we have our virtual, our virtual trading desk where we talk about trades all the time. We don't trade. Talk about trades, research trades, find trades. Once you find trades, then you want to get in and execute. But to be transacting back and forth all day, 
you're just churning your account. I mean, the broker is going to love you. Don't misunderstand me. You're going to get a great fruit basket at the end of the year. But I don't, it's just not a good play. You're not going to win the game on speed. Your connection is not as fast as a prop shop's connection. A, a prop shop's connection is not as fast as Goldman Sachs connection. So if you can definitively say that you're losing the speed race, you need to think what's your edge. The edge of the retail trader is you don't have to trade. You don't have to do a thing. As Warren Buffett says, there are no called strikes in trading. You can just sit around and wait for the best pitch of your life. And once you realize that, that's the discipline people talk about in trading. It's not discipline to wait for a line to, to set up or, or to, to wait for that double bottom to hit. That's not discipline. That's just trying to get lucky. Okay. I don't use the pen very much. I usually do it on Excel. Do you guys like what the, the pen better or, or, or Excel? Which is easier to follow. This market looks like poo-poo, huh? Right back down. Right back down. Stick with that line in the sand, guys. That 2603 is the big number. Ooh, split so far. I've got pen, Excel, Excel, pen, 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 Excel, Excel, pen. I'm confused. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> oh, no. Excel, pen, pen, Excel. All right. I've got a whole two different classes and let people say, okay, we're having a pen options class. Val likes Val added five pens trying to uh, stuff the ballot. <laughs> um, what else, guys? Got a little bit more more time. Uh, I'm gonna go over that CGC trade. That's probably my favorite trade right now. Just the CGC crone. I just don't get it. I just think it's wrong. I mean, and I keep looking for ways to disprove my theory, but I haven't found any. And I've got a lot of people who give me feedback and tried. Nothing's budged me. Um, Greg is saying, what's the max risk formula? Greg, for vertical spreads, for a vertical debit spread, the max risk equation is just going to be the difference between the strikes minus whatever, whatever you paid. That's your max reward. Your max risk is whatever you paid. Okay? Whatever you paid is your max risk. The difference between the strikes minus whatever you paid and and the way that you can practice that to double check your work is again look at the 15s against the 20s okay 15 20s that should be priced at like five dollars right it's stock so the so fifth the 20s are 1150 the 15s are 1550 it's five dollars. There's no premium in there. How do we know there's no premium in there? What Jonathan taught us earlier, of course, we just go to the puts. The puts are worth nothing. This Dumbo's got a nickel bid here. Not that I'd want to sell it for the five dollars you'd have to risk, but these are worth zero. Okay. Hey, Greg, those you can Google, man. Those are, so what I try to do, guys, is teach you things that you can, uh, you know, not learn on Google and, and more things that help you, like, manage trades and stuff like that. Those kind of questions, just Google. 
You don't need me for that. And I'm not saying that to be, um, you know, a downer or anything. I just, I'd rather go through trades than that stuff. Just Google. It's like when someone emails me asking what the earnings date is for Microsoft, I'm always going to reply Google. It's like, why do I have to do that work? Why just go, go do that work? So CGC is extremely correlated to Chrome. Chrome just got a massive investment from Altria. In my mind, that adds premium to the entire sector. Altria didn't buy them. Even if they did buy them, it would be the same, but it didn't buy them. So if they are so highly correlated, if one just got a massive investment from a cigarette company, who's, you know, Altria is a major, major business in, in the just a global business, why doesn't CGC follow? It has to. And if it doesn't, sell the upside of Chrome. So the trade that I like is buying upside calls in CGC. I would go out to Jan. I have some December. I've been trading Jan. I would do like right now, if I were doing it, consider the 35s for a buck 75. And then also Chrome. I would sell some of those upside Chrome calls, 14 strike. 85 cents or the 15 strike for 60 cents. Man, that trade makes a ton of sense to me. Okay. That's what I got guys. Does anybody have any questions to close us out? I'm gonna upload the recording. I'll send it out to everybody probably uh, early this evening. And with that as well, I'll also send out the uh, the registration link for the class next week. Next week, we'll really focus on uh, the premier week ahead and really go over that. Uh, Vince is saying, is it naked selling on Chrome? You know, you might think it's naked selling, but in my mind, it's like a quasi vertical spread because I'm long a highly correlated name. Okay, Nance. Uh, uh, Vince, Vince is saying, is it more risky to do that? Vince, I would strongly suggest that you follow it in paper trade. Okay, because this kind of this, I'll share trades like this a lot. And if there's uncertainty, then you're best off just following paper trading and just wait around and, and, and watch the behavior. And maybe it's something the next time that, you know what? Hey, I saw this once. It made sense. Something I'm going to play around with it. It'll just, it'll expand, not to be punny, but your options. Okay. Uh, Daniel, I double check with Carrie about your account. Daniel, okay. Um, yeah, should be checking email. She says to check your email, Daniel. If there's any issues, just email me back or email her back. There should be emails with access. There should be emails with that access, though. She's she's really sweet. I'm sure she got back. Okie dokie, guys. Thank you very much. This was a lot of fun. And uh, expect an email from me later in the day, okay? Any kind of feedback or any suggestions for, uh, for the next class, I'm, I'm all ears. The more feedback, the better, okay? Thank you all.